Hello and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Vivian Parry and our spotlight is once again on Inconext Healthcare. They're an Australian biotech that develops scientifically validated psychedelic and cannabinoid medicines. Today we're looking at Inconext's drug candidate, Psygad. As with their other products, it's focused on an area of unmet need, generalised anxiety disorder or GAD. It's a condition that affects tens of millions of people across the globe. And according to the World Health Organization, there's been an uptick of 25% in anxiety disorders since the pandemic, most notably amongst younger people. Now, women are twice as likely to be affected by GAD as men. And although it's typically seen most often in middle age, it's also the commonest anxiety disorder of old age. Traditional drug treatments often don't work as well as hoped, but might psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy offer a way forward? Well, interim trial analysis has just been released for Inconex's independent Australian Phase 2 SIGAD-1 clinical trial, the first study of its kind in the world to examine the safety and efficacy of psilocybin for treating primary anxiety disorder. The trial was led by Dr. Paul Lichnitsky, Head of Clinical Psychedelic Research at Monash University, under the guidance of Dr. Mark Bleakley, Chief Scientific Officer of Inconex Healthcare, who I'm delighted is able to join us today, along with Joel Latham, Inconex Healthcare's MD and CEO. Hello to you both. Vivian, good to be Hi. with you again. Very good to be with you too. Now, Mark, can I start off with you? Before we look at that uh, interim analysis, tell us about GAD and how it's currently treated. Generalized anxiety disorder, which we also term as GAD, is when someone feels worried most of the time. Uh, these worries aren't in response to a specific stress, such as public speaking or taking an exam. They're, they're persistent. They're happening all the time. Um, these worries are quite intense and persistent, and they affect a person's ability to complete everyday tasks and have a negative impact on their quality of life. Now, I said at the top that it was very common. Just how common is it? When we look at a 12-month period in, in the U.S. state, at least 2.7% of people are affected by GAD. And over their lifetime, this will affect 5.7% of the population in the U.S. We see similar statistics in Australia with approximately 6% of people being affected by generalized anxiety disorder at some point in their life. So it's a very prevalent disorder. And how is it treated? Right now, there's two ways it's treated. One is with cognitive behavioral therapy, and the other is with, with pharmacotherapies. Most of the pharmacotherapies are antidepressants, uh, the first line being the uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the SSRIs, um, and, and they have limited they have some success but it's still there's still a significant unmet need there so i'm guessing i mean you focus on unmet needs i'm guessing that's why gad falls into this unmet need category exactly so although these pharmacotherapies are available there's a still a substantial portion of patients that don't have an adequate response so they still have substantial impact of anxiety in their lives and then when we look at the the patients that do have a a successful reduction in their anxiety, many of those patients also have substantial side effects, one of the major ones being sexual dysfunction. So these patients have to make a very tough decision between controlling their anxiety and then having those negative impacts in other aspects of their life. So there's an unmet need there because overall, these patients still have um, a decrease in their quality of life, and we're looking to um, be able to support those patients and, and improve their quality of life through our, our novel treatment. Now, we're hearing a lot about psychedelics at the moment and their potential for treatment of these kind of disorders. But what was it about psilocybin that made you think that it might be so effective for anxiety? When we look at, at what psilocybin does to, to the patient's brain, it, it's a very intense experience. It induces an altered state of consciousness. So this allows the patients to, to access uh, memories, parts of their brains that may be repressed otherwise. It also allows them to build new connections within their brain. 
So there's two elements of what psilocybin is doing. It's allowing that psychotherapy to access the underlying root causes of the anxiety that wouldn't otherwise be accessible in, in a standard uh, psychotherapy environment, but also then building those new correct, new connections in the brain, changing how the brain responds, um, builds those new connections, and those are lasting connections. So we're not dependent on the drug being administered every day. It's it's a lasting therapy. These these dosing sessions then have a, a prolonged response, um, and and actually helps reduce that that anxiety response in these patients. Now psilocybin, psilocybin. Are we talking tomatoes and tomatoes here? Yes, we are. <laughs> There's a lot. I think it varies the pronunciation across the world. You're right down there in Australia. Here we are. Uh, I'm in the UK. So it's different. To, but it's the same thing, I'm assuring you all. Yes. So let's move to this uh, interim analysis that you've done. Tell me uh, what you found. The study in Australia is still ongoing, so we can't disclose any of the specific results. What we have been able to do is conduct a confidential interim analysis of, of the uh, the outcome so far. And we've been really pleased with what we've seen um, based on the results thus far. We've been able to model the likelihood of detecting a statistically significant difference between our psilocybin arm and our placebo arm. And we found that we have a greater than 85% chance of detecting that statistically significant difference with a confidence level of 95%. So at this point, it's, it's the readout we were looking for. And this gives us the confidence to proceed with the next steps in the program, looking at developing the drug product and, and engaging regulators. I'm presuming it's your methodology that's been in part responsible for this you know, very high competence interval. Uh, tell me a bit more about it. When we, we designed the, uh, the treatment protocol that goes along with the psilocybin, which is a key part of, of our treatment regimen in, in three stages. We first have a prepar some preparatory sessions where the, the psychotherapist and the patient are, are getting to know each other. Uh, the psychotherapist is starting to understand the patient's anxiety, but it's also preparing the patient for that psychotherapy session with the psilocybin. The psilocybin experience is very unique and being able to bring these patients um, to a level of understanding so they know what to expect um, is really key and important. The second stage are the dosing sessions. So these are when, when the drug is administered. So in the, in the clinical trial, the psilocybin or the placebo. The placebo we use is an active placebo. So it does give the patients a feeling of flush that sort of helps us maintain the blind, which is really critical. Um, the dosing sessions, we have two dosing sessions with, with the drug or placebo. And then there are integration sessions where the patient and the therapists then I guess, sort of reinforce what, what happened in the psychotherapy sessions and help build that lasting response and reinforce the, uh, the outcomes of the psilocybin sessions. And then the third stage are the follow-up sessions, understanding the impact of the, uh, of the psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy or, or the placebo and, and how it's infected the anxiety. So, so looking at the anxiety rating scales and, and other clinical trial assessments that allow us to determine the efficacy and the safety of, of our treatment regimen. Thanks, Mark. Now, Joel, all of this, of course, takes place in Australia, and there's been some very exciting news in Australia because it's just been announced that the prescription of psilocybin for certain mental conditions is going to be allowed starting July 1st. And it's a move that makes Australia the very first country in the world to officially recognize psychedelics as having potential therapeutic utility. So how might this impact in Connex's plans for SciGAD and for also your other programs? Well, first of all, Vivian, we'd like to applaud the decision from the Australian Therapeutic Goods Administration. Um, we're proud to say that Australia is leading the way in relation to the downscheduling of psilocybin for the treatment of uh, various indications. Now, in relation to how it affects our SciGAD program, there's only going to be a positive impact on the therapy that we're developing. We're well progressed with our phase two study. Uh, we've been working on this for quite some time now. And this news from the, the Therapeutic Goods Administration provides us with a potential shortened pathway to commercialization here in Australia, um, making it much shorter than what we were initially thinking which bodes well for us, given the fact that we have our commercialization strategy already set in place. We will be opening Australia's first psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy 
Clinic in Melbourne this year. And if we continue to have success with the SIGAB program, we're able to commercialise it um, in a relatively short period of time once that clinic opens. This analysis is uh, that you've done is very helpful. What does it mean in terms of your next steps? What's the next developments for SIGAD? Yeah, so next steps for us, it's really provided us with the confidence to be able to make various commercial decisions. And we're talking about decisions where, where, where we're spending and committing to spending quite large sums of money. So the interim analysis has provided us with the confidence to be able to make appointments and be able to progress to the next steps of this particular study. So we're working with Catalan, who is uh, who's developing, manufacturing and supplying our psilocybin, our own psilocybin-based product. And we'll be using this in our pivotal studies as we continue to work towards filing our IND and commencing pivotal studies throughout the US. And we're well on our way to well on our way to doing that. Now we were talking a bit earlier just how common a condition this is, but just remind us of your estimates for the potential addressable market for Zygad. Well, this condition is extremely prevalent. Um, based on our estimates across Australia and the US alone, we're looking at 8 million people that suffer from moderate, uh, from mild to moderate generalised anxiety disorder. Then if we're looking at a monetary value on a global scale, um, we estimate that it's going, going to reach $8 billion USD by 2027. So truly a large market that is primed to be disrupted, and that is exactly what we intend on doing. So a, a, a condition that's extremely common with treatments that are really not effective. Correct. And similar to our other assets where we're disrupting other indications and markets, we intend on doing the same thing with generalised anxiety disorder. And with the interim analysis that we've completed, um, we're, uh, we're, 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 we're quietly confident internally with, uh, with what we've developed here. So, Gerald, Cygad is only one of a number of drug candidates that you are investigating at the moment. Where does it fit into the whole suite that you have? Well, we have a very deep developmental pipeline uh, with 28 assets. But without a doubt, the, the Cygad program is one of our leading projects that we're developing. And it fits in with our normal um, with our normal suite of what we'd look at when developing an asset. There, there's a significant addressable market. There's... Um, uh, an unmet need to some degree and there's a market there to be disrupted um, and that's what we're focusing on and, and and it ties in quite well with our other developmental products and it's a, and it is complementary. Thank you I mean it's a really exciting field isn't it thank you both for joining us and we're going to look forward to hearing much more about your journey with SIGAD and if you want to hear more about Inconnex Healthcare and it's an investment case Look out for research updates on the Edison website. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye for now.